timeouts and intervals and request animation frame. These are the three key ways that we can create functions and make them run at some specified time in the future. Request animation frame is the very cool way of doing things. You, a lot of people are using it with Canvas. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, if you just want to take a function and run it later, it's very easy. You can write a function, come back an hour later and run it. Uh, but programmatically, these are the three things you're going to have to learn. And for you cool kids, I'm going to show you request animation frame plus a set timeout in the same procedure. So let's have a look at some code here. I just have a main.js file, nothing that interesting going on here. And this is how you can create a function and run it at some point in the future, which is something you might want to do. So if I had a little function here, and I said, I'd like to do this later, and all this function did was print something out into the console. Let's see what happens. As you can see, there it is. So what time is it now? 3.37, if I would like to come back at 3.38, as you can see there, meaning running it later, dead easy, right? <laughs> so obviously that doesn't help you much programmatically, but it does give you the concept that what we're doing is we're running a function at some point in time later on. And this is like the way an alarm clock works. Really what we're saying is if we set a time in the future to run, it will run. And the way to do that in JavaScript is using this global function called set timeout. And set timeout takes a couple of parameters. You can imagine probably what they are. The first one is going to be the function that you would like to run at some point in time. And the second one would be a value, meaning uh, how many milliseconds in, in the future you want to run this. So say you want to set this for an hour from now. Okay, so if we do it like this, this is one, whoops, this is one second, which is a thousand milliseconds. So there's one second, and we timed this by... Uh, 60 so this is one minute this is one hour and this would be tomorrow this time tomorrow obviously I don't want to run this because it'll take for me tomorrow to show you it working so I'm just gonna say uh, I'm gonna wait three seconds and let's try this and let's see exactly what happens so I'm waiting 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 and there we go and it runs it which is exactly what we'd expect yeah so what happens if I change my mind? What happens if I um, want to do something one time like this and then later on decide I don't want to do this? So how about this? This is something you want to do one time. Okay. The way we, we can stop this if we change our mind, say we decide we're going to do this uh, in three seconds and then we change our mind, what we need to do is we need to cancel it. Now how to cancel this? Very easy. We can create a reference uh, value here and I'm going to say reference integer is equal to the value of set timeout. So whenever a set timeout is created, a couple of things happen. It will decide to add this function to the queue. Now this is not when it's going to run, this is when it adds it to the queue to run. Uh, there's a slight distinction, and this becomes more apparent when we do uh, animations and request animation frame later. This, however, is going to be an integer value that determines the reference to this timeout, which means at any point I can call it and clear it out. So let's just run that real quick, and let's have a look at reference integer as well. So that's number one currently, and if I want to cancel that, all I would need to do is this, clear timeout. This means if I run this program, the word never again will run because it learned its lesson. Yeah, didn't want to run, you see? We cleared it, That's therefore this never even fires. And that's how you prevent um, a timeout from running, okay? So um, what other options do we have? Well, if you want to run this in a loop, say this is a habit rather than a one-time thing, like an alarm clock, think, think more of a, a habit, something that you want to do every day. Uh, now, I drink coffee every day, for those of you who know me. Um, and I can do this, I can say drink coffee, and you know I would do this every day, but let's just do it every three seconds, let's get some real caffeine going. Instead of using something called set timeout, what I can do is I could, um, I could call something called set interval. And set interval, you can imagine what this does, right? It will run, um, and let's just comment that out, we don't want to clear it yet. This, this will run every three seconds. 
and like last time we have a reference to it so if we choose to and we, and we want to stop this habit well I can call clear interval reference and that will get rid of it let's just run it and see what happens waiting 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 did I refresh my page one second so I'm clearing the time I don't think I saved it see I didn't save my own stuff. Let's try again. There. So in three seconds, this is going to keep firing and this is going to keep incrementing until I cancel it. So at any point I can say, well, what is reference int? It's one. Okay, well, that's easy. That means I can clear this out. I can say clear integer. In fact, I can even do clear timeout. So you notice the way this has stopped, except we didn't say clear interval, did we? We still said clear timeout. So clear timeout will actually get rid of intervals. What you're really supposed to do, though, is clear interval. That's the one that's going to do it. Okay, let's just run that again. And clear interval. Now, this shouldn't fire. Perfect. So that's how set interval works, and that's how set timeout works. Um, the alternative to doing this, of course, is getting a little bit fancy with a timeout. Um, because you know, obviously, in, in JavaScript, you can't do this kind of stuff. Let's just do a little loop. Let's say you do a loop in JavaScript. Let's say we loop this four times. And I would like to say, drink coffee. I would like that to happen four times. Let's just comment this out. Watch what happens if I run this. It does it instantaneously. It runs four times. Now, if I want to break that and run it at points in time in the future, I could do something like this. I could say alert. Actually, let's do it after it. And I'm going to say stop. And therefore, I can time how much coffee I drink. So I've just had a coffee, right? So I don't need to wait. I can wait around a minute or so. And then I say, okay, I'm ready for my next one. Okay, how regularly do I want to drink coffee? Well, maybe I can choose this one or this one. See what I mean? I can control how fast that interval is happening. One maybe was one second, another one was three seconds. With set interval, you're kind of locked into how many um, how many milliseconds you're choosing to run here. And so instead of obviously artificially pausing the event loop, because there's no way to pause in JavaScript, this is artificially, you know, stalling everything. And you never want to write anything like that, obviously. Um, the better way of approaching this is with a set timeout and doing something on these lines. So I'm going to say set timeout to drink coffee every three seconds. So let's put this, and this is mind bending, right, inside here. Now, obviously, we don't want to create a local variable for reference integer because then we'd never be able to call clear timeout, would we? Because, as you know, once you've got a local variable inside here, you can't um, you can't access it outside of it. So what we're going to do is take this reference to integer, create a little global here, just set that to zero for now, and we can then override it. So the idea of this is quite interesting, really, is if I just go into the console and call drink coffee, it will drink the coffee, and then what it will do is it will run it again, this very function, in three seconds. After three seconds, it's going to go back in again, and guess what it will do? It will keep running into it each time. And each time it does this, it's going to create a new value for ref, uh, ref int. Okay, so let's just run this and you'll see. So I'm going to drink coffee. There we go. Now that fired one time when I called it because I didn't did I refresh. Got to, got to remember to save. will help. Let's try it again. There we go. Nom. Nom. And that's going to keep going. So let's have a look at reference. Do you notice it's three? And if I look at it again, it's going to be four. So it's going to keep going up. So if I want to clear that timeout, I can't just go in and put number four or the five or the latest one because it won't stop. It's going to keep going. That's why we need to make sure that we have the reference uh, ref int in there. That will then clear that out and it won't fire again. Yeah? Okay. Why did I show you that? Why not just do a set interval? Why are we doing this? Recursion. Why are we calling the, own, uh, the the function inside of itself? Isn't that just overcomplicating things? Well, in most cases it is. But the advantage you have here, imagine this is some sort of variable. 
Yeah, instead of a instead of three seconds, you might want to time that. You could have you could have some sort of control in here, which is saying, I would like this value here. Let's call it x for now. Say this is a little integer, uh, and you can set x integer based on various things. For example, you may say, okay, well, depending on the browser, let's try and run this very very quickly. If a browser can handle that, if we're on a very old, if we're on an older system, or say we're on Internet Explorer that has a refresh of around 15.625, I believe, versus Chrome that has four, we can actually control and determine when we're gonna fire these. Why is this useful? Well, what happens when you're doing animation and you're trying to match the refresh rate of the screen to the browser's capability, and also linking that to knowing when the page is being repainted, and all these internal variables that are going on behind the scenes that you might not be aware of, um, if you had control of that, you could then get very accurate with when to call this function and do it in very, very efficient ways. And this becomes more clear when you start doing animations. So in part two, we're going to look at animations. We're going to move something around the screen a little bit, and we're going to see if we can interact with this value here. And I can show you how these things are being affected. And then I'll show you request animation frame, which does all that stuff under the hood. All right, see you in a bit.